uh, we're here today in uh, Strip Taxidermy Shop with Jeff Baird, who's a friend of ours, uh, and we're going to do a tutorial on how to cape an animal. Um, we've got an antelope buck here that Lorenzo shot, I think last year. He's got quite an antelope collection. It's tough to, it's tough to say. Um, but yeah, Jeff's just going to run us through and kind of show us tips and tricks on how to cape an animal. And you're going to run through the whole thing, right? Yep. Um, all the way, assuming that we've you know, killed the animal, we've left enough cape. This one's left all the way to the rear end, right? Yeah, he's all the way to the butt. So basically, they've more or less tubed it. I don't care for it being tubed. Antelope are easy to sew up. So I'm going to split it and just you know, the most important thing to do, get your animal lined out. And the, and, and antelope are great, because here's your center line. They have this mohawk. Huh? Yeah, they got the mohawk, and then just stay down the middle of the brown. You know, it, this one's frozen pretty hard, um, but we can work around it. It's not frozen that bad. So basically, take the knife, split all the way up the back, and then we're gonna- You don't want it frozen. No, <laughs> and, it's, and I don't want people caping a deer that's frozen either. You know, but we're on my- semi-trained professional what kind of knife do you like for caping i'm a haviland guy um i always use these rounded blades i think they're the x7 x or 70a's okay and you know a lot of people like the poker but poker is going to get you in more trouble yeah poker's and, catch it seems yeah. like i always if i get a hole in a cape when i'm caping it's because i've caught the tip in there and, mm -hmm. and i've made a slice so and you know another good tip tip for your backpacks if you get one of these ceramic they come out of those big light bulbs you can get them online, but you just touch your Havilland a few times with them and they're back to razor sharp. I can usually, you know, make one go quite a ways. And then these rounded blades are actually um, thicker metal than the, the ones with the edge, the 60A. Would you do anything different with an antelope than you would with a mule deer and elk? Or is it all pretty much it's the same? It's all pretty much the same thing. And obviously I, I just specialize in deer, but they're all the same thing so it's not that big of a deal we just got to get past this little tiny frozen part how far up the back do you prefer if somebody brings a cape in would you prefer that they you know leave it leave the neck so that you can do this part or would do you do you mind if they bring it all the way back to the horn and then split it yeah i would love it if they bring it all the way back to the horn and then pull it up and cut the skull off there at that last okay. uh, yeah, the last word break yep ears you just cut through the years, you probably show us here. Yeah, in a I'll show you here in a second because okay. it's kind of, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit more on the side of let's leave, let's leave uh, more than less. Something to work with. Uh huh. Because I get a lot of people who cut my actual cartilage down mm. too far. And one big thing with these any animal that you're working with, don't just stay in one position. Keep moving, or you're not gonna, you're gonna make problems if you stay in one spot. So basically, I'm just starting. He's got a lot of neck meat in here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to work around it. Another big thing people worry about is all the meat left on the hide. We're okay with that. We like this meat more than we like all the holes. So, <laughs> so leave the meat yeah. just to avoid the holes. Yep. You'd rather trim the meat yourself and try to sew up holes in a cape. Yeah, and obviously take the meat that you need, but, but don't, <laughs> don't get too worried about what we're going to think. We get that a lot. Sure. People worry about what we're going to think about them. You probably would like the people to keep your cape clean. Yep. As, clean. Much, as, as much as they possibly can. Mm -hmm. The leaves, the dirt, everything like that. The more you can keep off, the better. Yeah. It's definitely a little frosty. Yeah. Once we get it down here to the face, the face is actually. <laughs> Here to the back of the head and I'm still staying straight here hoping not to stab <laughs> sure. yeah. now start to pull that away and right here the ears out here right mm -hmm. if you fall that down in here's your skull right if you cut up here you're gonna go through the cartilage high just kind of trimming this away so if I come through here I'm going right where the skull of the ear meet there's your ear canal right in here. Now I know I'm past that ear. So you just cut the ear off right there at the base of the yep. skull. So this right ear's free it. now. Yep. And then I still like to come up, I'm gonna tee to the back of the back of the horn. And then with antelope too, it's always crucial just to pull this hair down and take your razor knife. 
I'm gonna throw a new razor on. Come up here and just cut around your horn. Just stay above your hair and ride it right on your horns because these are actual horns. Same with a velvet deer. And it's just freeing that up so that your skin's away from there and you're not worrying about cutting the hair off we, with the horn. We were talking a little earlier, so if you got a, an elk or mule deer and a hard horn, uh, just a flat iron or a flat screwdriver head, right? Mm -hmm. And I've used those before. You just go right up against that burr and you can just pop that hide away versus, yep. you know, cutting it, which I've seen some guys cut it and they've made some, you know, pretty good nicks around the, the hard horn of a, an elk or a deer just because they were just trying to cut it versus kind of teasing that out because it is kind of a jagged. Yeah. Yeah. Antelope aren't just straight around. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to pull that now. Then you can start to pull it away. And then I always just turn my knife towards it mm -hmm. and rub it up along the horn. Gotcha. And there's your back of the head. I'll switch to this side because you don't want to just keep going on this side. You always want to go back and forth or you're going to get too tight on one side or another. Now see the opposite of what I just said. You can skin this ear out quite a ways. Mm -hmm. And then if you go through up here, you're cutting a lot of the ear canal out. So stay along the skull right here. And you'll just go right down through it. Stay low. Yep. Go around this burr real quick. Like Shell said, they're kind of notched, so don't be afraid to get your knife and just go little little spot by little spot. This is especially with bison and sheep. Mm. Makes a huge difference to go around this. Deer, elk, not so much unless they're in the velvet. Yep. Yeah, it makes short work of it, doesn't it? Yeah. And that way you're not fishing around for where you're supposed to go. Now on the antelope, they kind of have a natural high hairline right here in the T. You can see that that natural hair. So I go straight with that hair and straight with that hair. So when you sew it up, it's still there. Yeah, it's almost a dark line right there yep. at the back of his head. It's just perfect to it. And you're always going to lose a little bit of hair with antelope as you're pulling on them. So just be careful. Yeah, it's that hollow hair. It just kind of mm -hmm. flakes out. <laughs> just drops out. Gets all over everything. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back to this one. How long does it take you to cape a, a deer, an elk, or you know, an antelope in this situation? Somebody brings it to you. Um, 20 minutes tops, you know. Pretty quick. This one's pretty froze, so mm -hmm. we get to play with that. But like I said, I've got it quite a ways there, so I just you just got to keep working it every other which way, which ain't hard. Now we're going to just orbital over the eye here. And then what I'm doing is I'm pulling here, I'm keeping pressure here, and I'm rolling it down so my fist is hitting into the antelope's head. And then I'm just going to kind of keep working along. Now that I'm to the eye, I know this is the eye, I'm going to stick my finger actually in the, the antelope's eye socket, deer, elk, whatever. And that way you can feel that other side and you're not going to cut your finger, or at least you don't want him. So I had a buddy tell me, he said short, light strokes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Especially if you're not familiar with a knife, mm -hmm. as a taxidermist is, you know, and then opening up that eye, you just, like I said, if you just stay in one spot, you're gonna, you're gonna make mistakes. So keep moving, opening everything up. But now I'm pulling this eye out and I'm gonna come straight down with my knife and pick up this inner glands. Hmm. Make sure that you get all the all that yeah. eye material, eyelashes. Yep. As I was looking around your shop, early season deer have got big long eyelashes. Yep. Like and then the later season it gets, the more it's gone. And obviously they break some of that. Yeah. But there's kind of like a a ligament from the eye coming down. So just stay against that bone here. Like I said, I'm, I'm gonna keep moving. I'm not gonna just do one whole side. 
you know, we're kind of getting down in this face area. I'm going to flip to this other side. We just got this ear off. I'm just barely touching, just staying along this hide. Yeah, just light, light mm -hmm. strokes. I remember. You yeah, know, there's no pressure. Yeah, my buddy that uh, had done a lot of them, that's what he always told me. Just real light strokes. Yep. And then the same thing, I've got that eye going. I'm probably just going to come down here and make sure we're good ways around. So when this face pulls off, it's just a little easier. Same thing, going to put my finger up in that eye socket and then just stay the other side of my finger. And I get people that'll actually cut the eyeball, I'd rather have the eyeball inside the cape hmm. than not have an eye lid. <laughs> It makes it tough. That's one thing I'm learning today is that more is more, is more right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I've, I've had to go to the beauty shop and buy eyelashes for deer, so. <laughs> <laughs> and create eyelids. <laughs> and we, we don't want to do that. No. Antelope have big old eyes, don't they? Oh, they do. Yep. I always oversize them when I used to mount them, mm -hmm. just to give that look. Yep. All right, now we're past both eyes. We're on this. It's never a bad time to stop. Come down here to the chin, and then just cut that gums right along the bottom of the teeth. And as that jaw goes in, so you're leaving all the jaw here mm -hmm. and all these lips. See how much lip I have to work with now? Yep. And they didn't need to cut the tongue out for pictures, so it's still there. So just go right close to that jaw bone. Yep, just staying on that jaw bone. And then just leaving all these the, portions of the lip. Yep, and then let me see if you can see this. That's for Brady to eat later. Right here. Just stay on this top gum and see how that just peels right away. Right Peel this upper gum. lip. Okay. And I don't I don't necessarily do it this way, but for people who have never done this, it's gonna make it easier for you when you get to this back side of all this. Right, most people aren't keeping a bunch of animals in a year, right? They, uh -huh. may, they may keep one or two. Uh, yeah, you know, at, at most. At best, yeah, yeah, so. So yeah, it's not, not nothing that's completely normal. So now I'll come back and I'll work my high points again. And I just keep in pressure, light pressure. And I'm just gonna roll, come around. Now we're starting to get to this jaw muscle, which is important because that's where we we're just on the inside of where the jaw was. Mm -hmm. So anywhere where that jaw, you can feel those back teeth through there. Yeah. Just slip through there and put your finger in there now like you would the eye. Okay. And just kind of work it around. I'm going to keep rotating. Keep it going. Like I said, we're just doing a circle up to this other jaw. Kind of cut high. I'm going to go right through it and get my finger in there, cut it down to that jaw line. Got it. And this is kind of the part where everybody gets a little scared is here at the nose. Yeah, this is the part where I typically am like, what am I doing here again? Yeah. And like I said, just keep going until it's easy. And on a fresh animal, this part's way easier. I'm having to give a lot more pull here because it's just coming out of being frozen. And don't ever cut a frozen animal. You'll screw it up. Just do it when it's nice and fresh. Backcountry hunters or yeah. somebody who's not going to be able to get this right away to a taxidermist has to do this. And I was telling these guys earlier and on the podcast, when you're coming along this nose, you can feel there's bone there. That's not cartilage yet. So just keep coming and pulling. I always stick my finger in its mouth to pull that away. Now I'm starting to cut through. So now we're, we know where to cartilage, right? Yeah. So just go straight down through. Mm -hmm. Now I'm cartilage all the way through. I'm going to cut these edges real quick. And then I'm going to stick my finger in that cartilage. I'm going to pull back. And I'm just going to run my knife along that. We're getting a little bit unsharp. 
So through that cartilage, uh -huh. I think that's the issue. I think sometimes, you know, when I was a younger man, I would start to see this black portion of the in, inside of the nose. Mm -hmm. And I would think, oh man, I'm screwing this up. He's, you know, he's going to need that. Um, but that's not the case, right? You, nope. can, you can paint that. And as you look at that, you turn it. Yeah, I've got more than I'll ever need right there. Right. <laughs>